What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. If you didn't already see the thumbnail, and I don't know how you would have missed that, but today we are gonna be building Loki's crown from the latest trailer that they've shown off for his title series called Loki. Surprise, surprise. It's coming to Disney Plus next year. Stupidly excited about this. Such an amazing character, thanks to Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and really excited that they'll have an ongoing series over on Disney Plus. After seeing the trailer, I immediately got a hold of Nico over at Nico Industries, who had his team produce a beautiful file that I'm gonna be 3D printing across multiple machines in FDM and in resin and showing off to you all today. And a huge thank you to Nico over at NicoIndustries.com for sponsoring today's video. If you're not already familiar with Nico and his site, you can go over there and browse through some amazing cosplay related 3D printable files that you can purchase and download and run off and start 3D printing for yourself. I personally use a lot of his files that are available over there. I know a lot of folks are also interested in grabbing those as well. You can use the code UJ at checkout to save a percentage off your total purchase. So make sure to check out the links down below and check out NicoIndustries.com. Thanks again, Nico, for sponsoring today's video. So a great thing about Nico's Loki crown file is that it's available in multiple pieces. So you can print the entire crown in one piece, or there's another file option that has it so you can print the crown portion as well as the horns separately. So as I mentioned, I wanna print this in FDM and in resin. And in order to do this, I needed to properly scale the file to my noggin. So I used a 3D scan from Scandi Pro that I had previously used and used for a lot of my scaling and brought that in and basically just rescaled the file to fit to my head. It came out to about 88% and then went in to all of my different slicing softwares and started slicing the files to fit on the printers of choice for today's video. Initially, I tried printing this on the Prusa Mini twice and ended up getting failures both times. I honestly think it will fit on there. I just need to look at reorienting the print so that it's not brushing up against the direct edges of the build volume there. I also went off and printed this on the CR10S4 with a six millimeter nozzle and it printed beautifully on that machine. I also printed the horns on a CR10 at two millimeter layer height with just a regular four millimeter nozzle. And of course I was gonna run off and 3D print this in resin as well. So I took the main crown portion and loaded it up on the Elegu Saturn and Chitu box, placed supports all around the perimeter, got it nicely angled how I wanted it to to fit on that build plate and ran off and printed it in Ciratec Fast Resin. Next up, we have the Epax E10. It's another mid-size 4K model screen resin 3D printer. I went off and printed all of the horns on that unit there in their hard resin. And once the prints had completed, I took the Elgoos off of its Wham Bam Flex Plate, which I love working with on my Saturn. I actually need to get one of those for my Epax E10. And then took all of the prints and ran it through the Elgoo Wash and Cure Station. Funny enough, all of these pieces, since they were broken up, fit really nicely in the wash and cure station and made it really easy for me to run and clean those. And then I removed the supports and then was able to run it back through the machine for the curing process. The great thing about resin 3D prints is they are so great to sand. It's super easy. I think to start, I used 220 grit sandpaper lightly sanded all across each of the horns and then moved over to either 400 or 600 grit to help smooth it out even further. The crazy thing is I think the sanding for the horns might have taken all of five minutes, like next to nothing compared to what it takes to sand. FDM prints. So once I was done sanding the resin prints, it was time to lay down some paint. So I used some automotive primer to help prep the adhesion painting process. One little tidbit, I am doing this while it is pretty cold outside. You definitely don't wanna be doing that. But thankfully, the process went relatively smoothly. The paint dried relatively quickly. I think I might have applied two layers of that primer to it. And I really like this matte black finish that this automotive primer that I picked up has. Normally, before I put down any metallic paints, I wanna put down a glossy base layer. But based on the trailers, it didn't look super metallic. It wasn't like an Iron Man faceplate. It looked a bit more matte and dull, and it might've just been the trailer and the lighting of that, but I kind of went with it. So I left the matte black primer on there and then used this metallic gold Rust-Oleum paint 
on it. And I think the results turned out pretty nicely. Again, not optimal weather for the painting process, but thankfully it cured in time for me to make this video and show it off to you guys here right now. All right, so here is the PLA print all put together. This looks really nice. This is a raw PLA print. Really no finishing has really been done on it. It looks really smooth. There are some rough edges there where the supports were. Again, could knock that back with a little bit of sanding or either primer or filler. I really like the look of the gold PLA here as well for this. Uh, I did add some elastic straps for this so that it will fit on my head properly. And let's check this out. Look at that. <laughs> This is awesome. So I'm looking at the uh, the monitor there so I can see what it looks like on me. Again, it looks really great. I could probably do with maybe some slightly thinner straps here, elastic, but overall a really great snug fit. Now, if my hair was just a little bit longer, this would probably look a good bit better. Oh, actually, hold on. I'm missing something from my ensemble here. There we go. That's much better. <laughs> Loki for president. This is such a beautiful model, a really easy print as well. You could probably print this all in one day. This was pretty much all printed and finished here in one day right before posting this video and sharing it with you guys. All right, we've taken a look at this PLA version. Let's take a look at that smoothed out resin print. And here's the painted resin print. So again, I used some primer filler. It's still not perfectly cured. It could probably sit for another 24 hours before it's really ready to touch because I have left some fingerprints there on the side of this. Uh, there are also a few little areas where I didn't exactly sand it perfectly smooth or I might have nicked it in the painting process, painting and curing process, as well as it was so cold that it didn't quite adhere and... Uh, you know, the, the paint didn't quite cure as well as I'd like it to have, but let's try this one on. I haven't put this one on yet. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh man, I'm loving the gold. The PLA version, funny enough, I actually really like how this looks and feels. It's a much, much easier to wear than the resin. This, the resin print is pretty hard and firm and rigid. The PLA print has a little bit of give to it. You could even heat this up with a heat gun and mold it to your head as well so it fits even better. Maybe you can pinch it once it's heated up and you don't even need the straps added to it, which would be kind of cool. Uh, with the resin though, it is a little heavier than the PLA version. Not that it would kill my head to wear this around for a few hours if need be, but the, again, the results are just so smooth to the touch and it looks really cool as well. At least I think it looks pretty dang cool. And again, the PLA version turned out really nice and smooth as well. Funny enough, if you are interested in picking up one of these for yourself, I have links down below to my Etsy site where you'll be able to pick up printed PLA versions of this exact same crown. And I might also be offering some fully painted resin versions of the crown as well. So make sure to check out links down below. Can't guarantee that how long those will remain in stock and available, but I will be trying to keep those up and fulfilling as many orders of these as possible for those of you that do not have 3D printers at your disposal. But for those of you that do, make sure to head on over to Nico Industries where you can find this file along with a slew of other files for your 3D printing pleasures. The other really cool thing about this particular project is that it's great for someone that's looking to get into cosplay. Maybe you haven't printed anything for cosplay. It's a really simple file. It should fit most build volumes that are out there for your 3D printers. You could even slice this up into multiple pieces for a smaller resin 3D printer and then just join them back together with UV light or glue them back together and continue on with your cosplay desires. So again, a huge thank you to Nico over at Nico Industries for sponsoring today's video and a huge thank you to all my Patreon members. Your support helps fund the projects that I'm working on in this channel. And I just want to say a huge thank you again to all of you out there. If you're interested in finding out more about my Patreon, you can find links down below. Hey, thanks again for watching you all. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down below about the Loki crown, what you think of it compared to the full on huge Loki helmet that you saw in the original Avengers movie. I actually really like this one right here. Hey, thanks again for watching you guys and I'll see you next time.
Bye now.